Slow down. No, you speed up. God, when Code Talker talks, I want to fall asleep. I'm sorry, Code Talker, but I'm Californian and you talk too slow. So in case you're like me and fell asleep every single time that Code Talker was talking, here is everything interesting about the vocal cord parasites that you may have missed. First things first, what are the vocal cord parasites? As the name implies, they're parasites that infect a host's vocal cords. These parasites then lay dormant until they hear the host speak the language they've been coded to target, and upon hearing it, they begin to reproduce and devour the soft tissue of the host's lungs, killing them. The VCP are spread through saliva, so eating and drinking off of an infected person's food or water, or even breathing in the saliva particles from them speaking is enough to be infected, which is what makes these parasites so dangerous. Though again, even if you are infected, so long as you don't speak the language the VCP is coded with, you should be fine. This is why Skullface never shows any symptoms of infection or infects the people around him despite being infected with every VCP strain, say for English, there is. He speaks only English, so the VCPs are never triggered to activate to attack him or infect those around him. Did you know the parasites weren't always harmful to people though? The VCPs can do a million and one things for people, including replacing the functions of highly complex organs like eyes, heal burns, and give you magic powers, like with the Cover unit. That's right. We have the parasites to thank for our B-Boy. I am the pain. In exchange for these abilities, the parasites sap a minimal amount of energy from their host to sustain themselves. The feasting on the lungs until dead component was actually something that Kotaker tacked onto the parasites by request of Skullface for his ethnic cleansing project. And that's a whole nother topic we're not getting into here. Eons before Kotaker and Skullface got their hands on them, the vocal cord parasites lived in mutualistic harmony with their hosts. The nutrients that they took from their hosts was negligible, and in return, the VCPs granted their hosts the ability to create complex sounds as they helped develop the host's larynx and resonating chambers. Some of their first hosts were dinosaurs, so we also need to thank the vocal cord parasites for dino noises. Can you imagine what watching Jurassic Park would be like without the dino noises? After the meteor wiped most of the dinosaurs out, however, the VCPs had to move on to new hosts, and those new hosts were the genetic successors to dinosaurs, birds. Eventually, the parasites moved on to humans, as people's bipedal walking meant that our throats could support larger resonating chambers and were a better choice for the parasites. As male parasites continued to develop human vocal capabilities to create more and more complex sounds to increase their chances of finding a mate, humans began to take advantage of these adaptations and used their vocal capabilities to form language. Around this time, a retrovirus began circulating and infecting people. This retrovirus was harmless to people, but it stripped sections of genes from the vocal cord parasites and transcribed them onto human genes instead, giving people the ability to continue to develop language for themselves without the help of the parasites. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, how is this even possible? None of this makes any sense. I got you. I was thinking the exact same thoughts. Apparently it is possible. According to the Oxford Dictionary, a retrovirus is a type of virus that inserts a copy of its RNA genome into the DNA of a host cell that it invades, thus changing the genome of that cell. We won't dive super far into retroviruses, but they fall into three main types. The first, oncoretroviruses can cause cancer. The second, the lentiviruses can cause immunodeficiency and death. And the third, spumaviruses aren't linked with causing any diseases at all. An example of harmful retroviruses are HIV-1 and HIV-2. So, a retrovirus that was benign to humans but harmful to the vocal cord parasites infected humans and began reverse transcribing the VCP's vocalization genes onto human reproductive cells. As humans took ownership of developing their own vocal sound systems in language, it prevented the vocal cord parasites from being able to successfully use the complex vocalizations they'd laid the foundation for to find mates, and so they gradually died off. These proto-parasites that had gone extinct were revived and then revised to fit Skullface's needs. Since the parasites started out as a symbiotic relationship with people, our immune systems never learned to target and attack them and this in combination with how infectious they are made for a very deadly combo. While working on this project, Code Talker was careful to never make a Navajo strain as this is his native language. He was already bitter at how his language had already come under attack and tried to be stamped out and replaced by English, 
and so he refused to make a Navajo strain. As mentioned before, vocal cord parasites come in multiple flavors, like skin parasites that make you super strong or can expose pigments in its cells to perfectly blend into its surroundings. A not so fun fact about the parasites that cover, vocal cord parasites that cover the skin of the host instead of living tucked away in the vocal cords, is that their biggest weakness is desiccation. So desiccation is the removal of moisture from something. What's not fun about this, you ask? Well, because the parasites lose surface moisture at a greater rate than we do, they don't get the moisture that they need from the arid air around them to keep functioning. To counteract this, they release the salt from inside them to put moisture into the air that they can then absorb and keep themselves moist. This moisture condenses around them and appears as mist. And holy god, is that disgusting? I just thought the mist was magic, but it's parasite sweat? Ew! What does that even smell like? Freaking rip venom that's disgusting that he has to work and breathe in that. Once the parasites have sweated it out and there's no other water vapor to utilize, they and their host go into a form of suspended animation. In Metal Gear Solid 1, Solid Snake is unknowingly infected with fox dye, a retrovirus designed to kill people with a specific set of genes. Snake! This virus is actually a future iteration of the vocal cord parasites. The vocal cord parasites work by copying a specific language onto their genes and then activating and devouring the lung tissue of their host upon hearing that language. Fox dye works by having a specific set of DNA recorded onto its genes and activating upon exposure to that set of DNA. It's why, despite the fact that Solid and Liquid are brothers and twins, that fox dye can affect one and not the other as their DNA isn't 100% the same. At one point, our brother, Liquid Snake, muses about Sniper Wolf being seemingly unaffected by fox dye and wonders if it had to do with the tranquilizer she was always taking. When Venom first meets Code Talker, he's smoking something that he offers to Venom in order to deafen the parasites. And it's neat to see that even all these years later, and despite all the alterations that the parasites go through, that there's still a way to dampen their destructive forces. Another fun fact about the vocal cord parasites that I couldn't fit in somewhere else is Code Talker offered to make Ocelot a vampire. What if I say I know a way to immortality? Really? Er, parasite. Ocelot prefers to be a kitty though. Thank God. We don't need a hundred years of Ocelot. So. In summary, the vocal cord parasites are the reason many creatures, including dinosaurs and eventually humans, had the ability to make the complex sounds that they were able to make. The vocal cord parasites were not always harmful and used to live in symbiosis with their host. Skullface forced Code Talker to weaponize the parasites for use in his ethnic cleansing program as they could target specific languages down to regional differences. Carrying the vocal cord parasites isn't a death sentence so long as you don't speak the language they've been bred to target. And finally, the vocal cord parasites can replace the functionality of organs and grant you super cool powers. Any questions you may have about the vocal cord parasites should be able to be answered by keeping these bullet points in mind, but if they don't, please let me know in the comments below if there's anything else about the vocal cord parasites that has confused you. We'll all try to answer each other's questions about them. What did you think about the vocal cord parasites explaining the powers of the Cobra unit? I'm torn. I both think it was a neat explanation, but I also don't believe we needed an explanation in the first place, to be honest. Thank you so, so much for checking out my video and giving it a watch. If you made it this far, subscribe, like, share. You know how to do it. You know what we do. Join us in Discord, follow my Twitter, all that kind of good stuff. Follow my Instagram. And just really honestly, thanks for giving my video a try. And I hope everyone is having a great day. Please take care of yourselves, and I will see you next time. Thank you.